Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Cleve. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you. So welcome, everybody. Welcome and lots of thanks to Cleve. And we're going to hear some more back from Cleve soon, later on in the, um, in the show. But welcome to Letters from Generation Dreaming. This is the second part in our Windrush Grant funded program, celebrating the Windrush Generation and the generations that followed. Now, some of you might remember the last one that we did, which looked at the Windrush generation. This one is really about a celebration of those letters that were written back home from that generation that landed in England. So we just want to, um, before we go any further, we must acknowledge our funders. The Windrush Day Grant, Leeds, Leeds City Council, the Emerald Foundation, we have interviews and performances and films to share with you this evening. So we hope that you will enjoy it. I'm also going to welcome my co-host, Emily. Emily, are you there? I am. Hello, Khadija. Lovely to be here. Fantastic. So, Emily, I think that you've got some etiquette for us to, um, to adhere to while we're on this Zoom programme, this platform. We want everybody to feel like they're actually in a live space where there is also etiquette, but we also have some Zoom etiquette. So can you tell us what they are, Emily? Yes, indeed, Khadija. So hi, welcome. Lovely to be here and great to be co-hosting with you again, uh, Khadija. Um, oh, so for our Zoom etiquette, um, Here's a few tips uh, for the event. So please keep yourself muted to help maintain good sound quality, but um, we'd still like to see your faces. So you can keep your cameras on. 
Um, you can show your appreciation through hand clap symbols. And if you have any questions, then you can post them in the chat room. We're recording the event and it's being streamed live on Facebook and also on YouTube. Tonight's programme, Letters from a Generation Dreaming, is based around the theme, as Khadija said, of letter writing. What we're doing is highlighting the importance of letters in our lives, passing on the family history, cultural traditions and customs through sending and receiving letters. So um, letters have been used to connect Caribbean families and friends for generations. Letters pass on joy, grief, uh, opinions, advice, uh, instructions. They document people's lives. And through finding and reading letters uh, with family and friends, we can discover forgotten narratives that can be gifted to the new generation. Letters rece received, sent, never opened or thrown away. Um, they may be letters that you seek out or the letters that become a treasured family heirloom. Now, um, I'm sure you'll agree, Khadija, that the, the letters of the Windrush generation are important in terms of developing an understanding of the effects and the experiences of migration. Letters written by the Windrush generation actually form one of the largest historical resources on the subject, and they also intimately document the ways in which those early migrants coped with that emotional turmoil uh, and insecurities in their new lives uh, in England. So, so the process of writing letters plays also a key part in the formation of identity. You know, you are uprooted from your homeland and you occupy this kind of betwixt and between space, um, psychologically, culturally, geographically. A letter a migrant sends and receives makes it possible for them to span these borderlands, if you like, and, and make sense of their experiences. Um, and one of the, 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 um, the most sort of prolific academics um, who's written about letters is called Kathleen Dehan, and she says that um, the migrant letter writing is so important, and she says historians should make use of this really extraordinary, rich historical resource. You know, she says we should seek out letters in the archives and the attics, and we should study them. Um, and, and this is what uh, today's session is all about. Um, my grandfather wrote letters when he first went to France in 1946. He wrote letters home to his wife, and we found them after they had both died in a beautiful little velvet case tucked away in a secret drawer um, in her um, in, in her in one of her um, cupboards. And so it's been wonderful to revisit their lives through those letters. Now, um, we were honored in our last event uh, by Linton Quasi Johnson sharing some of his poems with us. And we thought a good way to start this event would be by hearing him again. Um, and we're going to be playing his particular poem about letters, which you probably all know it's called Sonny's Letter. Here, Linton Quasi Johnson uses the letter writing form and he transforms it into an oral tale. So through this letter to his mum, the young man, Sonny, reports an attack on his brother that he suffered at the hands of police brutality. So it's very much um, echoes some of the, the Black Lives Matter uh, protests that have been going on around police brutality this summer. And it shows, I suppose, how little things have changed. Sonny's letter is set in the 70s and um, it draws our attention to the sus laws. So when police could just stop a suspect um, on the street without any other cause than finding them uh, suspicious. So let's hear uh, Linton Quasi Johnson's uh, Sonny's letter to kick off the proceedings today. Poem which dramatizes our experiences with the sus laws in this country. It's called Sonny's Letter. Brixton Prison, Jeb Avenue, London Southwest to England. Dear Mama, good day. I hope that when these few lines reach you, they may find you in the best of health. Mama, I really don't know how to tell you this. 
Because I did make a solemn promise to take care of little Jim and try my best to look out for him. Mama, I really did try my best. But nonetheless, me sorry to tell you, sir, poor little Jim, get a rest. It was the middle of the rush hour when everybody just a hustle and a bustle to go home for them evening shower. Me and Jim stand up waiting for a bus, not causing no fuss. When all on a sudden a police van pull up, out jump three policemen, the whole of them carrying baton. Them walk straight up to me and Jim. One of them hold on to Jim, so them taking him in. Jim tell them to let go of him, for him not do nothing. And him not a thief, not even a button. The Jim start to wriggle, the police start to giggle. Mama, make I tell you what them do to Jim. Mama, make I tell you what them do to him. Them thump him in him belly and he turn to jelly. Them lick him pan him back and him rib get pop. Them lick him pan him head but it tough like lead. Them kick him in him seed and it started to bleed. Mama, I just couldn't stand up there and I do nothing. So me juke one in him eye and him started to cry. Me thump one in him mouth and him started to shout. Me kick one pan him shin and him started to spin. Me thump him pan him chin and him drop on a bin and crash. And dead. Mama, more policemen come down and beat me to the ground. Them charge Jim for sus. Them charge me for murder. Mama, don't fret. Don't get depressed and downhearted. Be of good courage till I hear from you. I remain your son, Sonny. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was um, the wonderful and amazing Linton Quasi Johnson. And thank you so much, Emily, for that introduction into what we are about to receive from a lineup of wonderful artists that we've got here this evening. And um, this is Jamaica. 